Hello, YouTubers. Welcome back to another tutorial on complete.NET Web APIs. Uh, so in today's session, what I'll be covering up is uh, versioning of APIs. Uh, well, versioning is uh, uh, a very important uh, feature, but uh, most neglected feature. Uh, it's uh, mostly useful wherein uh, an API is already in production or deployed uh, in production wherein it is already being consumed by an application and uh, you have to still uh, keep on updating the APIs. Uh, but instead of just updating the existing API, uh, uh, wherein uh, once you deploy it, it might break uh, certain functionalities. The best approach is to version the API wherein uh, keeping the existing version, which is already being consumed by an application untouched and releasing another version uh, wherein uh, the new version can be tested and then uh, it can be con uh, consumed uh, by just changing the URLs or uh, 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 there are two other ways I'll just be touching uh, upon them uh, so that uh, there is least uh, downtime as well. Okay, uh, so let me just uh, show you the three ways uh, so there are three ways of versioning. One is using a URL, uh, one is using query string, and one is uh, using an HTTP header. Okay, so I mostly prefer uh, using a URL, but it's up to you. So I'll show you all three methods uh, on how to achieve that. So let's get back to our code. So in the previous tutorial, we created a uh, uh, two controllers wherein we also achieved uh, pagination, filtering, and sorting. So let's uh, continue with the same controller. So now what I'll do is I have a company's controller here and employee's controller. So what I will be doing is uh, for versioning, uh, the, uh, the thing I prefer is I create a folder called uh, folder for every version. So maybe let me call it as v1. So I will add my controllers here. So both the controllers I will add under v1 since they are version one of the API. So automatically the namespace also has changed. So if you see they are under dot v1. So now the next thing uh, which I will be doing is uh, for versioning, we'll need to uh, download a NuGet package, uh, two NuGet packages. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. So let's uh, right click and go to NuGet packages and download the uh, Microsoft ASP.NET Core versioning uh, NuGet package. Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.MVC.versioning. So this one. And let's download the latest uh, stable version. Let's click on install. Once that is installed, we'll also install the uh, other one, which you see here, Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC versioning and API Explorer. Uh, let's check out the latest one here as well. Click on install. Okay, so once the uh, installation is done, let's uh, just check for the packages. Yes, so we have uh, these two packages all ready and set up. So once that is done, the next thing we'll uh, do is go to uh, controllers and create another folder and I'll name it as v2. So my version two uh, controllers uh, will be uh, falling under this. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll just take a copy of these and paste it here so that we have the version two ready. And the way we'll uh, go about this is, uh, let me just go to company controller. Uh, we'll change the namespaces of the V2 one to V2 so that all the errors of duplication are gone. So we have the V1 controller and V2 controllers. So let me open both for companies. So this is the V2 one and this is the V1. 
Okay, so now uh, we will just replace this. So if you see the route, we'll just replace it so that it can match this. So the first uh, way I'll show you is uh, using URL. So that's the reason why I'm uh, having this URL here. So the it will have a route prefix of API slash V and this will uh, dynamically take the version of the controller or whichever version uh, we are using. So, so it will be API slash V1 or V2 slash the controller name. Okay. Uh, so let me do the same thing for the V2 one. I'll just comment this portion here. Okay. And the next thing which uh, is needed is the API version attribute. So for V2, I'll be calling it as v2. So API version, I'll say 2.0. And for uh, v1, I will just call it as version 1 or 1.0. 1 Once uh, this is done, let's repeat this for employee controllers as well. So let's go to employee v1 controller and add these attributes here and the same goes for employee v2 controller let me just come in this out and paste this and call this as v2 okay so now everything in the controller is set up uh, now the next thing is we'll go to program.cs okay and we'll need to configure some things here uh, for the versioning to work so the first thing what we would uh, need to do is uh, just create a new class. I will call it as uh, configure swagger options. So what I'll do is I'll create a new folder here inside uh, presentation APIs and call it as swagger. Okay. And inside this, I'll create a new class and uh, call it as configure swagger options let me do that add a new class and i'll name it as configure swagger options dot cs okay let's start with this and let me just paste the code here so so these uh, codes can be readily available on uh, git so you can see uh, see the source here it's uh, microsoft's github implementation for that so you can just find it uh, go to the uh, appropriate repository and find the configure uh, swagger options.cs to quickly uh, try and implement it okay and what i'll do is i'll just change uh, the name of my api so this will be the API version and this will be the API. My API is organization API, organization app API. So this will be the name which will be displayed on the Swagger UI. Okay. So once this is, uh, once we have created this class, next thing what uh, we'll do is we will go to configurations and uh, dependency injection for this one. And the first thing what we'll do is after add swagger gen, we'll add uh, or configure versioning. So let me just paste it here. So services.add API versioning and under options, I'll set some default options like uh, report uh, API versions true. So what this does is uh, if the response contains uh, API version compatibility information, or no so this is set to true then option uh, default api version so by default the api which will be used will be version 1 so i have specified that if you want uh, to default to version 2 then it will be 2 so let me keep it as 1 here uh, assume default version when unspecified is true so so what this will do is this will always take the first uh, version if it is not specified. 
Okay. So once this is done, let me add another configuration. So this is basically for uh, versioning to work with uh, Swagger UI. So let me just add this here. So what this will do is this will make versioning work with Swagger UI. Okay, so uh, this, you can uh, get the documentation for this uh, on uh, Swagger. So you can just go to the official page of Swagger and you can find the configuration for this. Okay, or you can just copy uh, this code if you can. Okay, so once this is done, let's move to uh, program.cs and we will need to add few more lines of code uh, in program.cs. So the first thing what uh, we need to do is we need to create a provider for versioning. So if you see app.services.getRequired service, uh, iAPI version description provider. Okay, and based on this provider now, what I will do is uh, for use Swagger UI, we'll add some options. So let me add the options for use Swagger UI. Okay. So if you see, I've added these options for Swagger UI. Okay. So now I guess we are all good to check uh, if our API is functioning as expected. So let me click on start and let's see if it is working as expected. And so it's building and we have our Swagger documentation. Okay. So we are good here. So if you see here, uh, we have a drop down for both the versions now, version one and version two. So if I go to version two, okay, I think there is some error here. So let's check what I am missing. Let me just have a look at this. You've added this. You've configured this. Yes. So what we are missing is another uh, key factor, which is let me go to dependency injection. And we need to add. We need to inject the service, the class which we had created that is configure swagger options. So in dependency injections, just after this, we will uh, inject configure swagger options, okay? So that it works properly in here. So let me just check both the controllers once again. Uh, so this is version one, this is version two. That's looking all good. Employee version one and employee version two yes so this is looking all good so now what i will do is if you see both the controllers are exact replica replica so how we'll come to know what is uh, different so let's add a change in version two so this is version one and this is version two so in version two what i'll do is i'll create another endpoint uh collapse to definition uh, what i'll do is i'll uh, add another get endpoint for getting the count so let's say count of companies, public async task action result, get company, companies count or get company count. And let's say return. Okay, let's await unit of work dot companies dot get total count async. So, so this is the new uh, modification which I've done to the API that is in version two. So version one will not have this endpoint. Not only this, if there is any updation or modification to your existing uh, endpoints, 
uh, it's uh, ideal to use uh, versioning because uh, your API can uh, be in use already. So this is the best way to do it. So now let's go ahead and start again. Let's see if it is working fine now. And here we go. It's all loaded up. Let us go and check if it is looking fine. Yes, yeah, so, so if you see, this is version one of the API, wherein we don't have the count endpoint. And this is the version two, which has the count endpoint. So let me run version one. So companies, so companies endpoint will be the same. So it is giving me the response here. So uh, now if you see the URL, so let me go ahead and copy the URL and show you in Postman first. Let's open Postman. <clears throat> so I'll show you the difference so that uh, with the other methods of versioning, we can compare it. So I've just copied this URL and let's try to invoke it from Postman so that you can get a clear picture. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll paste it here. Companies. Uh, so this is version one. So API slash version one. And if you see version one does not have uh, the count endpoint created. So if I try to run it here on version one, it should give me a method not found or 405. So you see the response is 405 and it says unsupported API version. But if I change this to V2 now, just simple change in the URL, if I change it to V2, and then I'm getting the count. So it is successfully finding the count endpoint uh, with version uh, two. Okay, so so uh, this is the way it is uh, helpful wherein your V1 can already be in uh, use uh, and you can deploy the updates without touching V1 so that V1 is still working, but uh, you've made the changes in V2. So simultaneously, you can uh, uh, test both. And once you are uh, uh, good to go with V2, you can just uh, consume V2 in, in whichever application you are in. Okay. So, yeah. So let's go to V2 and try to run this. It will be the same output what we had in uh, so, uh, Postman. So it's three. Yeah. So this is uh, one method of doing it using URLs. Now the next method is using query string. So I usually prefer this one or the third one that is using uh, HTTP headers. So for doing it using query string, we'll keep the URL as it is. So let me comment this one and keep this one. Similarly, I will just comment this route and keep it this one. And then I'll go to configurations. I'll go to program.cs, uh, not program.cs, sorry. I'll go to dependency injections class here. And if you see this, I've already commented it. I'll uncomment this piece here and include the namespace Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC versioning. So what I'm doing here is uh, API version reader. So query string API version reader. So let me call this as organization API version. And once this is done, let me just start. And we'll see what changes appear in Swagger. Okay, so now if you see version one, when you click here, there's already a version uh, field for version. Okay, so this will be your query string. So if you just supply the version and execute it, it will give you the response. But if you see the URL, the URL will look like this with a query string. So if we run this in Postman, you just put it here and we specify 
uh, say we call the count endpoint with version one uh, and version one does not have the count endpoint. So it should give you again 405. And if we change the version to two and try to execute it, it will give you the count exactly. So this is how the second method works. Now, again, for the third method is also the same way. I'll comment this one and uncomment the other one. API version reader is, I'll specify the header API version uh, reader, wherein I have to give this in the header. So in Swagger, it should look somewhat similar. wherein it will prompt you to add the header this time. So this will go through header. So header will be, if I say version 1.0 and see this, I'm getting the results here. So now let me just copy this to Postman. So I'm running it. So there's nothing in the URL this time, but in place of header, what we'll have to do is we'll have to copy this header here. And in headers, I will use X API version and say version one. So if I choose version one, so it will again give me 405 because version one does not have the count endpoint. And if I just replace this to version two, it should give me the count of companies, which is three, okay? So sometimes this method is also quite uh, uh, useful because you don't have to make changes in URL, uh, but you just have to change the headers, okay? But uh, for me, the preferable one is uh, using URL, uh, which I mostly use in my applications, okay? So uh, that's it from me uh, for this tutorial, a quick one for uh, a very important concept of versioning, but quite neglected one. So let's meet up in the next one wherein we'll work on slightly modifying the uh, Swagger documentation. Currently, if you see, it looks quite plain. So we'll try to uh, configure some things and add more documentation to it, okay? So till then, it's bye from me.